Hello, my name is Rosemary Ariole, and I'm here with Pastor Gail McCoy Church. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we are here to talk about the part of a virtuous woman, a book I'm happy and privileged to author. And uh, I gave her a script to read, and we are here. I want to hear her take on the script because she was telling me something a few days ago while I was chatting with her on the phone. So I said, Don't worry, just hold on, I'm coming to interview you. So you can share with the ladies, those of you that are watching, to hear her view and her take on the book. I just gave her some few pages of the book, not the whole pages, but a few pages were the way. And she has something to share with you. Pastor Gail. Oh, great. Um, well, first, I really want to take the opportunity to really thank you that women of God will take the opportunity to come out of the quiet zone and begin to do something for God that is quite productive. And when I was going through the script, I was quite impressed the way it was actually laid out. It's actually quite simple, but very articulate, and I've got so much um, scripture back in that even if you have never met God, when you begin to read it, you begin to understand that something is missing from your life. Um, because when you begin to talk about a virtuous woman, you begin to um, extract from Proverbs 18 who she actually is, and people will begin to understand that there is so much, so much substance that is missing from a woman's life. That if they begin to apply these principles one by one, it doesn't have to be all at one time, one by one, because you've outlined them one by one, then they will begin to transform into somebody totally different. You know, another thing I found so intriguing was the fact that you took examples from the scriptures of women who were virtuous, of women who were not virtuous, That's correct, I did. And, and what they did, yes. and what they uh, they should have done, and I, I, I thought that was so, it, it, it brought the book alive. It brought the book alive, because when you just look at the part of a virtuous woman, people tell the thing, virtuous woman, what she do? you know, you'll be a virtuous woman all the time. Uh, what did she add that I don't know about? Love this index. But when you read it, I think it should even be part one, volume one and two. Because you put you put so much into it that um it is it is um giving you so much to think about, so much to digest, you can read it over and over and over and over again. And still get um what you trying to say in a simple one, but still said still in a, in a in a place where it has been Deeply, step by step by step by step outline, and that's what I thought. So, you know, in the book, I actually talk about the funny thing about this. I would say it's funny, you know, this thing, the title, is actually given to me by the And when he gave me this title, I knew that I was going to write something. But when and how, I didn't know. Until God began to speak to me about putting this book together. And I, when I was, I remember asking the guy, I said, How do I put it together? said, well, you can do it what the precious woman is not, what the precious woman is, the biblical precious woman, and then the core principles of the precious woman, which yeah. is the part four. And that part four has been used as a I remember reading when I read it from the first part. It, um, I want to read this part because I think it was quite profound on Jezebel. Go on. You know, Go on. it says Jezebel on the other hand was devilish in all aspects. She committed many atrocities during the reign of her husband, King Ahab. Than any other woman in the Bible. That speaks of a woman of a who don't have no sense of virtue. Most notable of our her, her virtuous deeds was her vow to kill God's servant, the prophet Elijah. And you know, while I was reading, I was even getting my own revelation as you were pending the, 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 the pages of this book. And sometimes we tend to think as women, oh, I didn't actually take out a knife, or I have not actually sent a degree and instructed someone else to kill. But as a virtuous woman also, I think our, our, you, you, I think maybe it's somewhere out in the book, our lips and our tongue can also be in a place of Jezebel. That's correct. It can be operating under her same spirit. But I think somewhere here. I was looking for that part, but I could just know. But uh, how we operate with the lips, our attitude, our... our, our yes, oh yeah, there are, there are many women today who portray Jezebel's spirit, yes, spirit, even in the church. How do we know if Jezebel's spirit is operating in the church? We must discern in people rebelliousness, stubbornness, seduction, turmoil, and treachery. 
I know you made reference to 2 Kings 1, 9 to 21, where we can see actually the characteristic of this woman. And Revelation, when, when um, John was talking, Revelation 20, 21, was talking about the, the, the eminence, the characteristic, the, the precepts of the spirit of Jezebel that is so eminent in the I would recommend this book to every single Christian. I recommend it to every Christian woman. Even people that are not Christian, if you give it to them, it is so outlined that their lives can be transformed and blessed from it. And every man of God, every man, just get a copy and give it to your wife. It would change. The things that you're looking to pray for, you don't have to pray anymore. It needs to be transformed. And even it's recommendable for men and pastors, as a matter of fact, pastors, which I think is recommendable for pastors to introduce to the women in their churches. This is a book tough. you can use for Bible study. Yes. It's a book you can use for retreat to build themselves up spiritually, emotionally, whichever way you want to look at it. This book will help those women. It's very good for us. Thank you. I think this is, um, I know you've written a lot of books, but I think this is the one. Have you read all the I've read segments of it. Um, the one with the prayer song, the prayer mark, the prayer song, maybe, yeah. That, that one is just mapping out yeah. the prayer. But this one, this is going to be the one. It's going to be used, it can be used as a tool, it can be used as a, a book cover, it can be used along the Bible, it can be used as study, references, it has it all. Because it's so outlined and impact, it has everything that is needed to transfer that woman into the world that she has it. I pray for the call. Then you will pay me for advertising. Thank you, Pastor Gail. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the time, you really, because I know a lot of people don't like reading. For you taking the time to read the transcript and to me for giving this interview. Thank you, Lord.